Let me show you a little bit of an attack ad attacking Alberta's oil and gas industry. This was produced by a lobby group called Lead Now. Here's a 10 second clip of that ad. Since then, the Harper government has stripped our environmental protections, put all our economic eggs in one risky basket, and damaged our international reputation. They've taken our country backwards. Holy cow, whoever made that ad sure hates Alberta oil and gas, right? Well, the guy who's in charge of lead now, at least until two days ago, is this fella. His name is Graham Mitchell. He is a Toronto anti-oil lobbyist. And when I say that, I mean he actually is registered with the federal government as an anti-oil lobbyist. You can see his registration page right here. He's been doing this sort of thing for well over a decade. He actually was an executive assistant to Jack Layton when he was a city councillor in Toronto. He's basically a Toronto leftist activist who hates oil and gas. Until a couple days ago, he was also a director at the Broadband Institute, where he taught people how to campaign against oil and gas. The guy's a hater of oil and gas. Now, I say all these things ended two days ago because that's when Graham Mitchell was appointed the new chief of staff to Alberta's energy minister. Let me say that again. Canada's biggest hater of oil and gas is now in charge of running the energy ministry in Alberta. It is shocking. I wrote about this in today's Financial Post. We actually broke this news on Wednesday at our Alberta Town Hall where I showed this information to the 500 people assembled there. Well, someone from the Wild Rose Party was there, tweeted about this news, and before you know it, other journalists finally decided to be journalists instead of just stenographers for the NDP. Journalists who for a month have been giving the NDP government tongue baths finally started to do their jobs. I want to show you the first evidence that maybe, just maybe, other journalists will follow our lead and criticize the NDP government of Alberta. Take a look at this scrum from the Edmonton legislature yesterday. Take a look. Optics are important and, and you, you know, it, there's some concern with the industry, there's jitteriness with the industry, and yet one of your key advisors now is a paid lobbyist against pipelines. Isn't that well, a concern for you? Shouldn't that be a concern for you? At this point, my concern is to, to move forward. We've been meeting with industry this week, twice already, uh, moving forward with them, and it's going to be my leadership that takes us in that direction. Sorry, that Fair question. Do you think it's a concern to have a registered anti-oil lobbyist as your chief of staff? And look at the stock answer that Margaret McQuaig Boyd, the uh, energy minister gives, oh, well, you know, it, my concern is to move forward. Yeah, well, you didn't answer the question. And take a look at the reporter trying again. Sorry, I've, I've asked you twice now. Why will you not answer that question? My leadership is going to be the one that's taking us in that direction. My staff will follow my direction in uh, establishing uh, market access. So you, you know that when a reporter said, I've asked you twice, that the reporter's getting a little bit testy. Well, Margaret McQuaig Boyd, the energy minister, sticking with her official talking points. My concern is to f move forward. My staff will follow my direction. Yeah, that is not answering the question. So here, take a look at the third try. You don't want to address the issue then? Is that it, Minister? You know what? Right now, I'm, I'm late. You won't address the issue? Oh, I, I, I'm late. Can't talk to you guys. Seriously, this is top-level PR advice. You can see that the minister is getting a little bit agitated, not just with the questions, but the fact that she was obviously unprepared by her staff for these questions. Here, here's the fourth try. Take a look at this. Why can't you answer the now? This is a pretty straightforward question. It's pretty straightforward. Are you worried about having a lobbyist be your chief of staff? No, I'm not at this point. I don't have all the detail. Uh, I will be getting that, but I understand he worked for uh, Lead Now or whatever it's called for a few months as an interim director. Why can't you answer this question? That's a good question to put. And I'll tell you the answer because she didn't know. Because Margaret McQuaig Boyd was not in charge of hiring her own chief of staff. He was assigned to her by Brian Topp, another Toronto anti-oil sands activist who's now the Premier Rachel Notley's Chief of Staff. Margaret McQuaig Boyd could not answer questions about having an anti-oil lobbyist as her Chief of Staff because she didn't know about it. She wasn't given any say about it, but she was paying the price for it in front of reporters. She did utter some sort of answer. She said that she's not worried about it at this point. Well, of course not. She didn't know anything. She doesn't have all the details. Well, there's really just one detail. He's a registered anti-oil lobbyist. But 
she says, well, I understand he used to work for LEED now. Yeah, they are anti-oil sands lobbyists. He also worked for the Broadbent Institute. I, I want to show you one last clip before Margaret McQuaid Boyd did the only thing she could and run away. Take a look at this last part of the scrum. Take a look. You understand that? Was that, was Are you that considering someone that was actually sent to you then, or was this your decision to hire him? Um, you know what, I, I have to go. I'm going to be late, and I don't I'm want to be late the first. Did, yeah, did you know so. he was a lobbyist? Did you not have this discussion I, with him? I haven't had a discussion with him today. He's uh, What role did you have in, in, in I, I have him? to go. I'm sorry. I've got to get a late. Are you changing your chief of staff minister? Boy, that's getting rough, eh? Were, was he sent to you or was it your decision to hire? Clearly he was foisted on him, we know this. And he, she simply walks away saying, I didn't have a discussion with him, I'm late. She's steaming mad. Steaming mad at the fact that she couldn't answer those questions. Steaming mad at the fact that she was put in that position. I want to help Margaret McQuaig Boyd. I know you don't think I mean that, but I do. Here's why. Margaret McQuaig Boyd, is not a radical activist herself. She's not the Jack Layton downtown professional protester like Graham Mitchell is, like Brian Topp is. She's about as normal as NDPers get. She's a teacher and former uh, small school uh, college administrator from a small town in, in Alberta. She's not a big city latte sipping elitist activist. She's about the normalest person in cabinet. And she came to Edmonton looking to put her best foot forward. She has been meeting with oil and gas executives saying, I want to work with you. I think she means it. I mean, I know she's going to raise taxes, but I don't think she's a hater. She's not an anti, to use a phrase. And she was ambushed by the radicals in her own government. She's furious. I think Margaret McQuaig Boyd could actually be a moderating force on the radicals in this government, but not if she is being manipulated by Toronto anti-oil lobbyists. So will you help me do something about it? Look, Margaret McQuaig Boyd is a new Democrat. She won fair and square. She's the energy minister. That's democracy. But we can help her get rid of this Toronto oil lobbyist foisted upon her. Will you join my petition? The petition is fire Mitchell ca firemitchell.ca just type that in to your browser or click the link below firemitchell.ca and here's what the petition says read this petition let me read it to you we the undersigned albertans demand that you fire graham mitchell the toronto anti-oil lobbyist who was assigned to you as your chief of staff mitchell has spent his career attacking alberta oil and gas workers and sabotaging our province's economy every moment mitchell remains on your staff is proof that you simply don't mean it when you say you want to work with Alberta's oil and gas industry. And the fact that you had no say about hiring Mitchell, that he was assigned to you by the Premier's office, shows that you are not in charge of your own department. That's the petition wording. This isn't even about oil and gas anymore. It's about is the energy minister in charge of her own ministry. Let's help her out. Will you join me in signing this petition? and sending her an email, not to her ministry office, that's run by Toronto anti-oil lobbyists. Send it to her own constituency office. Her email address, it's below, so you can just click it below, but I'll tell it to you, it's dunvegan.centralpeace.notley at assembly.ca. It's hard to remember, but you can just click the link below. Send an email. But also, if you have the courage, make a phone call. Call the Ministry of Energy. You'll speak with a staffer, but that's okay. That makes it actually easier, I suppose, to do if you're a little bit shy. Be polite, but firm. The phone number to call is area code 780-638-9457. That's 638-9457. Tell them your name and where you're calling from, and tell them that we simply can't have a Toronto anti-oil lobbyist running the oil department, it's just absurd. It's a conflict of interest. He clearly hates the industry and wants to destroy it. That's what he's been doing for years. Tell the minister she can appoint a new Democrat. That's fine, but not a Toronto oil basher. That's just crazy. And you can tell she knows it, how she was embarrassed by those questions in the scrum. Look, this isn't just about this particular lobbyist, Graham Mitchell. This is about setting 
the tone for the next four years. This is the NDP testing to see what they can get away with, how much Albertans will take. Will Albertans really accept a Toronto anti-oil lobbyist running the oil department? We're about to find out. I hope you're with me. Visit firemitchell.ca and share it with all your friends. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.